Hey guys, so welcome to our first online Zoom session with uh, Karen Freeland, who's a, a master coach, and me, Sonia Pinto. I'm a certified nutrition coach and uh, digestive health coach. Yeah, so uh, basically today we're going to be talking about the Mindset Matters Part 1. And that begins with our story. We're both going to be talking about our story and why we ended up with the issues that we have, which is namely GERD and poor silent reflux. So um, Karen, would you like to go first? Oh, sure. Thank you. So um, my story actually starts out with me thinking that I had a sinus infection. And so I went to the doctor like I always do and got a Z pack prescribed because I had so much nasal pressure and my ears were hurting. It felt like I had an ear infection or something. And I took the z pack, no change. And for me, that was crazy because normally I take a z pack and it's gone, you know, like that. My sinus infection is cleared up. So I didn't really pay too much mind to it. I was taking Flonase and thinking like, this will just go away. And then all of a sudden, around August, or excuse me, around October timeframe, I was with my kids at the mall and I went to take a bite of my blueberry bagel. And as I was swallowing it, it felt like it was stuck in my throat. And so, you know, panic set in and I thought, oh my gosh, this is the end of me. I'm going to die in a mall in a Panera choking on a blueberry bagel. And I take a quick swig of my decaf coffee and it made it feel worse. It made it feel like the bagel was swelling in my throat. And so my kids kind of looked at me like, oh, mom's struggling. Like, is she okay? And I'm trying to get this bagel to come out of my throat that wasn't there, but I thought it was there. And I drank some seltzer and I was like, we got to go. I think I, something's wrong with my throat. I don't know what's wrong. So we leave the mall and the whole drive home, I'm thinking, it's cancer. I know what it is. I have cancer. There's a lump in my throat. That's why I can't swallow anything. And I was like, of course, then you're thinking the worst, right? Mm. Oh no. What am I going to do? Like, you know, am I going to leave my kids before they're even, you know, in their teens? And so I got into a doctor right away. And of course she checked me just my regular primary care doctor and said, you know, you're not, you don't have cancer. You're not dying. But she said, I think you have something going on with your throat, like a reflux, and I want you to go see an ENT. I was like, okay, what does this mean? You know, I still was very confused. I had no idea like what was really wrong with me. So I, this was like a Tuesday. By Friday, I was getting into the ENT and I could barely swallow. It felt like razor blades. And I was having a lot of yogurt and ice cream because I thought, oh, these are cold, soft foods. These are going to be good for my throat. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I was, you know, feeding myself more acid and making the problem worse. So I went into the doctor, he scoped down. And of course he came up and said, yep, that's it. You have something called LPR or silent acid reflux. I'd never heard of this before. I'd heard of GERD, I've heard of regular reflux, right? But I'd never heard of silent acid reflux. And the reason it's called silent, for those of you that don't know about LPR also, is because you don't really have symptoms of heartburn or this, um, you know, like burping sensation and some of the things that you would normally hear or feel. So it can be a lot of just ear pain and sinus and constantly stuffed up nose and sore throat. And it was like, a bomb hitting me when he gave me the news. But I don't think it really sunk in completely. It was just like, he handed me a list of paper of things I could no longer eat. And it was everything I loved, you know, pasta with red sauce, wine, um, lemon juice, seltzer. I lived off of seltzer. I took seltzer to bed at night and I would wake up in the middle of the night thirsty and take a drink of seltzer. And I'm a pretty health conscious person. I work out a lot. I thought I understood healthy eating. Clearly I did not. Um, so it was a real big shocker for me. And then as time went on and I realized the severity of this you know, disease, if, if I don't take care of myself, um, 
it really hit me and I had to change everything. Like I had to do a complete 180 and cut out all alcohol and all coffee, even the decaf. I couldn't even have decaf. It would trigger my symptoms. Um, and I felt very depressed, a little hopeless at times because it was around Christmas at this point and oh. everybody was going to holiday parties and having a good time and eating cookies and drinking. Oh. And I, I couldn't participate in any of that. And you know, American culture, and it maybe it might be similar in Australia, but American culture, like everything we do is eating and drinking, right? Like absolutely. It's, yeah, it's always absolutely yeah. 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 <laughs> so it's very hard to go out and feel like you're part of something when you can't really partake and be one of the crowd. So it really hit me hard. And I had lost a uh, pretty significant, I lost like 10 pounds, which at my size is a lot. Um, and I wasn't trying to lose the weight, but the diet was so restrictive because I had to go on a full detox. It, I, the medicine wasn't working. They put me on a PPI um, in the morning and um, Pepsid AC at night and it still wasn't working. I got one of those pillows, you know, to sleep on an incline and that still wasn't helping. Now, eventually all of these things in combination for months on end did make an impact. And I'm now happy to say that I'm off the medication and I you know, have a very strict diet still, but I'm able to manage my day-to-day -day symptoms. Um, but it was hard. It was really hard to go through that path and to walk it alone, which is why I'm really excited you know, when we get to part two of this series to talk about the mindset and how that can impact us. So yeah, that that is my sort of story and journey in a nutshell. Wow, I hear you, Karen, and I can I can absolutely imagine what you've gone through because I've gone through something really similar, except it was in different circumstances. And I can just imagine Christmas time not being able to eat must have been like devastating, you know, if you go to a lot of parties and you just cannot eat. So I can just imagine what you've gone through. So now coming back to me, um, well, my story begins actually in Germany. We were posted in Germany. My husband was posted in Germany and we went there as a family. This was around 10 years ago. And uh, my husband was actually hospitalized for pancreatitis, which is wow. basically a disease. So he was in the hospital for like uh, 10, 14 days and he had no food or water by mouth. And I was alone with my three-year-old daughter. So it was very traumatic to put it mildly. I did not, I do not remember sleeping or eating for. Oh, we just lost your sound. Yeah, it looks like you might've got muted there. Okay. There you yeah. go. Oh, oh sorry. So uh, I, I do not remember eating or sleeping in those days, like for like maybe three to four days in a row or maybe more because I was like just out of my mind with fear. That's because my husband's brother passed away from the same disease at the age of 31. So it's a genetic uh, thing. So I was like, it really affected me. And I started emotionally eating out of, uh, out of fear and anxiety. And I went to my comfort food, which was uh, a lot of chocolate and a lot of coffee. And uh, well, you know, those are the triggers for good. And, um, and occasionally when I would remember to eat, I had to take care of my three-year-old. So her food and her feeding, taking care of her was the main priority. So I would like pick up a bagel or whatever, you know, like croissant or something like that. And that was my food. That's what I remember. And those 14 days came, 14 days when, praise God, my husband was discharged from hospital and uh, we actually flew back to India before coming to Australia for like one or two months. And uh, being an Indian, I have grown up eating a lot of Western food because my parents live in the US, but also a lot of Indian food. And... Uh, I started loving wheat and wheat became a staple. So I used to have the wheat flatbreads and that sort of aggravated it. I had no idea what was happening. When we moved yeah. to Australia, I decided to uh, uh, work again. I had taken a break from work. Uh, I'm basically an MBA by education. And uh, so I decided to go back to work. And when I began going to work, I, I got the most weirdest feelings ever, which was like, I used to be having brain fog, 
I couldn't focus on my work. I began making mistakes. I got a bitter taste in my mouth. My stomach was bloated. I was giddy. I was dizzy. And uh, the works. Wow. Like, you know, uh, yeah. And I also had something like teeth discoloration. And I remember going to the dentist and he asked me if I smoke. And I was like, no, I don't smoke. So these were just a few of the symptoms. And then I also got something called, because I was a sugar addict, I had to turn to sugar and a lot of chocolate. I developed something called Sibori dermatitis, which also comes with trauma, uh, like terribly itchy scalp and, uh, and basically an overgrowth of yeast bacteria in your body. So I had all those symptoms and I could not focus on my work and I had to give up my career. Okay, so because wow. I lost a lot of weight and I became, I'm, I'm like 60 kilos is my ideal weight for my height. And uh, which is like a hundred and what, 120 pounds. And uh, I became 45 kilos, which is like almost 25 pounds lesser. So uh, it was like really crazy. Then uh, after a couple of years, I went to India to uh, meet my parents who were there. And on the flight back, I had some smoked salmon. And I realized that was one of the biggest mistakes of my life because uh, you know, eating raw fish on a flight, you don't know the quality, the hygiene of the food, although that was, I don't want to name the airline, but those were like really good airlines. When I came back, I found my tummy had like distended and become like this big. I looked seriously pregnant. I remember my daughter telling me, are you pregnant, mom? Is there a second baby coming? And I laughed and I said, no, 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 there's no second baby coming. So, um, <laughs> and then I, then I developed like a choking feeling in my throat and I, and I felt like breathless. I couldn't breathe. And uh, yes, and I was feeling terribly giddy. So I thought this is definitely something. There is something wrong, seriously wrong. I thought I'm going to die. This is the end. So I had to go to the doctor and, uh, I actually researched my symptoms and I found something called H. pylori. And I went and told the doctor and she said, oh, this could just be low iron and stuff like that. And I said, can you just do a breath test or whatever test for H. But I was actually asking the doctor. She said, okay, I can do it. And then bingo, it turned out positive. So I had to go on a totally restrictive H. pylori diet. Not only the GERD diet, which I was doing for many years to manage my gut symptoms, but also on a H. pylori diet to manage the H. pylori. With God's grace, uh, I'm totally healed now. And I decided that I need to do something about it. I cannot let my uh, sickness not be a uh, uh, reason for me to not do something. So I thought, why not reach out to the world and a lot of people who are helpless, without hope, without direction, who have no idea what to do, how to go about it, and uh, basically to just give you hope that you can also be an overcomer. If only you know that it's just not diet alone. It's a lot of things. Because if I look back on my life, it was my stress. I did not sleep for like, maybe a week or 10 days during Germany time. And of course, the kind of foods that we eat, which could cause us to get all these kinds of pathogenic bacterial infections. So therefore, uh, I decided to study and get certified as a digestive and nutrition coach and uh, a specialist. And uh, therefore, I just hope that you can take care, take advantage of our experience and our knowledge and come to both of us uh, to Karen for uh, her expertise in mindset management and how it was really difficult for me. Honestly, I'm a foodie and it was extremely difficult to put it mildly to give up my chocolate and my, all my past. I, I'm, I love Italian food like Karen knows and uh, I'm really fond of gourmet food. So to give up my food and go on a diet, which I had to still make it tasty was a challenge. So you can check out my recipes for that. But uh, it took a lot of mindset change. And that's what we're going to be talking about in our next episode. So do join us for that. We look forward to seeing you. And we seriously hope, oh, I, I hope I've been looking into the camera. And I seriously hope that uh, you can uh, follow us and uh, contact us if you need any help whatsoever. My mission in life is to help and make sure that nobody ever has to give up their career for lack of knowledge, lack of information or help. So looking forward to seeing you guys. Cheers. Cheers.